Hi folks, uh, welcome back. Uh, quick video here. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, using what are called clipping masks within Photopia, Photoshop, whatever you want to call it. Works the same in pretty much every um, sophisticated image editing program like Photopia or Photoshop. Um, clipping masks is, you can see it right here on this particular layer. Uh, this is my Gorilla model that I created in Sculpt GL. Um, and this is the finished version. This is what the final final uh, design looks like in my case. Um, back to this one. Um, at the moment, it looks not all that exciting. Um, I have done a number of adjustments here to increase the contrast, make the colors a little more bold, make it a little bit more interesting to look at. So all of these layers right here are what are called clipped clipped to my main layer. So if you look closely at these layers, you'll see that they have, uh, a, they're, they're kind of indented over and they have a little arrow that's pointing down to the layer that they're clipped into. Okay, and what that means is uh, that these adjustments that I've made are only affecting this single layer. You'll notice that they are not affecting the background at all. Okay, um, you can't really see that all that well. If I put a uh, put a nice background back there, something like this, uh, you'll see the difference immediately. So there is uh, just a generic cloud background. I'm just gonna stretch it to fill here. The uh, proportions don't really matter, so I'm just filling. Um, let's see, I go for something like that. Okay, so here's my background. Uh, and you'll notice that my adjustments that I'm doing are not affecting the background. Okay, so this is done using what's called a clipping mask or clipping group in Photoshop. Um, and I wanna show you exactly how to do it. Uh, this will be pretty important for our next uh, final steps here on our project. So here is my original uh, image. Uh, you see how much more dull it looks. Um, I might wanna add uh, texture to this. I might wanna add, um, uh, ch alter the colors or anything that I wanna do that is only gonna affect this particular layer is done using a clipping mask. Um, so here's how it works. Uh, very simply, I'm going to find a, actually I'm just going to make a new layer just to demonstrate. So you'll notice over here, this layer has my gorilla, this one that says layer two. You know what, while I'm at it, let's just rename it. Uh, if you double click on the layer name, you can give it a new name. Um, so I'm calling this one gorilla and I'm going to call this one uh, color. Um, and I'm just going to grab a brush, just a standard regular brush. I'm going to make it really large like so, like so, uh, and I'm just gonna draw some lines. Okay, so this orange color now is on this layer and the gorilla is on this layer, okay? Uh, what a clipping mask does is it makes it so that the layer above is only seen inside the layer that's below it. That doesn't make much sense, but let me demonstrate and it'll make perfect sense when you see it. So right now, this layer is on top, it's all over the place, notice that. Uh, if I right click on the top layer, uh, or if you're using a touch pad or a Chromebook, you click with two fingers, um, and I simply choose clipping mask. Uh, when I choose clipping mask, watch what happens. That layer will magically be restricted so that it only shows up inside this layer, okay? So if I turn off my gorilla, the other layer disappears completely. Uh, there's still two separate layers, so they still live in their own area. Uh, if I move the top one, you'll see that it doesn't move the bottom layer, it only moves the top layer inside the other one. If I move the bottom layer, the top layer stays where it is and the bottom layer moves around. Um, if I wanna move both of them together, I can select both by holding shift and then I can move them both together, okay? Um, so fairly straightforward, but this is really, really an important thing to understand for uh, the techniques that we're gonna be doing on the next step. Um, for example, what if I wanted to, let's say, put a texture inside this layer? Um, I found a texture over here that I like. This one is a picture of cracked um, asphalt, like a 
an old driveway or an old uh, parking lot. Uh, I'm gonna simply copy it and paste it. That's you know amongst the easiest ways to do this. Uh, I'll just edit, paste. So this is pasted onto a brand new layer. You'll notice over here, layer five is my asphalt and the other layer is my gorilla. The asphalt is on top of the gorilla, okay? And when I right click, I can say clipping mask. And when I click clipping, when I click clipping mask, you'll see what happens, boom. So now that texture only shows up inside the gorilla, which is exactly what I wanted. Uh, I can still rotate it. I can still resize it. Uh, reminder that right up here is the checkbox for transforming the layer. So if you want to adjust it, move it, rotate it, whatever, you just have to make sure that uh, the checkbox up here is checked for transform controls. Um, that allows me to move it around, resize it, scale it, whatever I need to do to make it fit my um, object. Okay, so now that I've got a texture on there, what would I want it? Why would I want that? I mean, that looks ridiculous. Um, well, remember, you have over here uh, blending modes. So, right over here on the right side are all these different blending modes. They all do different things. Typically, these up here are going to make your picture darker. So, this, these guys right here are going to make the picture darker. Um, these down here are going to end up making it lighter somehow uh, by com the way that it combines those layers together. Uh, and these down here are going to generally blend them together kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, in my experience, overlay is typically the layer that has, or the, the layer style that has the best um, balance for a typical picture, but uh, you're gonna have to decide exactly what look you're going for, okay? So that's how you add a texture. Um, it, this could be a texture like a, um, I mean, I'm gonna get into more into this in a different video, so I'm not gonna get into it too much, but um, you get the idea. Uh, what happens if I take my cloud layer right here and put it on top, okay? So now I have clouds, put this back to normal. I have the cloud layer on top of everything. Well, what the heck? Uh, well, if I were to right click and say clipping mask, okay, now the clouds are inside the gorilla, okay? Um, if I adjust my blending mode now, again, I can combine that cloud layer with my gorilla layer. Okay, that looks kind of cool. I'm into that. Um, there is no exact science to picking the blending mode that's going to work best for your image. Uh, literally, what I end up doing is just going through and trying the ones that I think might work. Um, but there's really no way to tell until you just dive into it and start really playing and see what the effect is. Um, I'm going to leave that with overlay for right now. Um, so that would be what I would call a texture layer. It's a tex it's a layer that has a picture on it. Uh, what if put this uh, I'm gonna put this pavement in the background like so? So I kind of like the uh, kind of like the uh, clouds on the gorilla. Uh, and for the background, I'll just put this back there for right now. Um, find a mode that works. Not a fan of that. I'll just go with that for right now. Um, so this is my background. This is in my gorilla. Uh, what if I want to change the colors on this gorilla? I don't want to change the colors in the background, but I only want to change the colors on the gorilla. Uh, well, that's easy enough to do. I'm, I'm going to put this layer underneath here for the time being, so it's just out of the way. Um, so uh, remember our adjustment layers are this this little icon right down here that looks like a black and white circle. Uh, these are all my adjustment layers. Um, these are covered in a different video, which uh, you can find linked on our classroom. Um, but for right now, let's just say I wanted to do a hue saturation adjustment. Okay, so now as I uh, adjust this, you'll notice, um, actually bad example, let me, turn that back on okay so now as I adjust this you'll see it uh, it's gonna move that over a little bit there you go. okay so now as I adjust this hue adjustment 
you'll notice it's affecting the whole picture. It's affecting the gorilla. It's also affecting the background, okay? Um, in this case, I don't want that to happen. I want this adjustment that I'm doing to only affect my gorilla layer, okay? So again, same exact thing as before. Um, all I have to do is right click the layer, the one that's on top, and then choose clipping mask. And now that adjustment layer is only affecting my gorilla, okay? This is a very important uh, concept to master, okay? Once you start doing more complex um, objects like this, you're gonna have lots of layers. Notice that I have in this picture probably, I don't know, 30 or 40 layers, something like that. Um, I don't know, 25, 30 layers. Um, Lots of adjustment layers. The ones that, that have a name like hue or curves, those are all adjustment layers, meaning they are uh, changing colors on something rather than actually containing a picture. Um, so there's a lot of adjustment layers. There are a lot of textural layers. There are a lot of um, uh, image layers, and they're all stacked up. They're all combined together. Um, but a lot of them are clipped together. So once you start doing more complex images, you really have to get in to the habit of understanding the clipping masks. All right, um, that's all. Thank you.